Yeah, the mechanisms of virus reduction, also as it's outlined in the guideline, uh, so we have the two mechanisms of inactivating the virus and partitioning. Inactivating here, I just depicted it with, uh, of course, you don't use uh, foaming sulfuric acid. Usually this would work also very well, I have to say, but then you would also destroy your, your, uh, your drug. Uh, but um, uh, acid treatment is very well known to, to inactivate a virus. And you have to find conditions that you inactivate the virus, but you don't harm your protein, yeah, or harm your drug. Uh, sometimes uh, we are getting now more and more to this uh, that, yeah, we used to, or most of us, or many of us used to work with antibodies, and this was very stable, but now we are getting more and more complicated format, and these proteins are not so stable anymore. So if the low pH treatment with the acid treatment doesn't work anymore uh, any longer. You can also try with solvents or detergents. Uh, this is a bit more gentle to the protein, but also destroys uh, here the lipid membrane of, of the enveloped viruses. That's the mechanism of inactivation here. Yeah. Uh, Non-enveloped viruses can be uh, used by uh, UV irradiation. It's a lot used in, in the blood industry. It's not very much used uh, in in a biotech industry. Yeah. Um, due to at least it's my own experience, quite long a time a long time ago when we, we once tried this, uh, because it does certain harm to uh, to your product to your protein. Yeah. Um, well, how do you quantify such an inactivation? So you have to use here now an infectivity assay, as I said before, uh, because um, uh, yeah, I put the question here, why couldn't you use PCR assay? Um, because with this inactivations, uh, you just destroy the envelope of the virus, but you don't destroy the, the nucleic acid, you don't destroy the, the DNA or RNA, and uh, therefore a uh, nucleic acid detection like PCR uh, wouldn't work. You would still find it, but it's not active anymore. In the partitioning uh, kind of category, um, you can use either the infectivity assay or the, the quantitative PCR assay because here you're separating the virus from the protein. Yeah. <clears throat> and two mechanisms are outlined, and also these are the ones that we are all using. Yeah, is either different binding properties in the chromatography or just simply by size. Yeah, you have a filter. This is actually an electron micrograph of a filter. It's also quite instructive, yeah, but somehow you think about it, it's like a membrane with holes in it. And it's kind of in some way true, yeah. You can see you can see here some holes, yeah, but it's 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 not like a sieve, yeah. Where you can see also there are different layers, and it seems to be more look like a kind of a sponge type, yeah. And also the holes are all they're not the same size, yeah. So there's a size distribution. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's quite interesting to think also about that, how such a filter inside looks. I think we have here one uh, expert, I think I heard in the course also uh, working on how such filters are made. So it's quite an, quite an interesting topic, actually. Yeah. 